Hi everyone, this is my website, idnworldwide.com, and uh, right now I'm on the blog page, and this is one of my articles, Israelite Community Group Economics, Networking, and Communal Living. So I just want to read a little bit about it, because I want to discuss one of the things that I'm noticing amongst our people, and it, I'm sure everyone has also noticed, is that we have a huge buying power. And I'm not even talking about the diaspora globally, just even if we're just referring to African Americans living in the United States, as it says right here, the buying power is $1.4 trillion in 2019. According to Sea Lake Center for Economic Growth, African Americans, not even including the rest of the diaspora, collectively are richer than the gross domestic product of Mexico. So basically, though, we have more wealth just referring to African Americans here in the United States, then the entire nation of Mexico is projected to increase to 1.8 trillion by 2024. And we know right now we're entering into 2023, so who knows if that those estimates may grow even higher. Now, when you look at if African Americans had their own country, it would be the top 10 richest and wealthiest country in the world. Especially if we're going by these estimates, one point, going, getting close to $2 trillion. I mean, come on now. Now, I just want to highlight this with something else. This, you're taking all this into effect, and this was during, even during the rise of the pandemic. This was what our rate, this is what our buying power was. But you have to take into effect that how long does the black dollar even stay in the black community? Well, let's take a look at that. It says that they project that the dollar only circulates for six hours in the black community, maybe even less. Now, so for us to have that amount of wealth, and we only, the dollar, our dollars only stay about six hours in the black community. And again, we know why, because, you know, you got Air Jordans, you got, um, other sneakers, you got cars, like um, whether it's buying luxury cars, you know, instead of us getting something more economical, we want to show what we got. So buying it cars, um, fake hair, I mean, jewelry, I mean, the list goes on and on. So we're spending our money on very wasteful things. And it says right here to examine spending by racial groups. Uh, so this guy and his colleagues collected data, and this was just back in the 80s to 2000s. I mean, you can't imagine what it's like now. It's probably gotten even worse with you know the entertainment industry and you know media, rap music. They like to spread that lifestyle to our into our minds. It says blacks and Hispanics at that time period, 1986 to 2002, spent up to 30% more than whites on comparable income on visual goods like clothing, you know, uh, cars, jewelry, the research found. This meant that compared to white households of similar income, the typical black and Hispanic household spent $2,300 more per year on visible items. Now, when we look at this, that they were spending more than other races, if you if you look at this, which says that, uh, we'll just take a look at something real quick. It says the average white family has eight times the wealth of the average black family and five times the wealth of the typical Latino family. Now, they also go into they also went to death about how long it would take for us to catch up economically let's see where that's at might not be on this one all right so it says if current economic trends continue the average black household will need 228 years to accumulate as much wealth as their white counterparts to hold today now that's just today by the time 228 years come you, as you can see you'll never be able to close the gap so when we look at the fact that despite them having more wealth, we spend more money than they do on the visible items, it's ridiculous. 
Now, obviously, it's not just a, a set thing where, you know, every single black person in the community does this. No, but you do have enough. But yet, despite all of that, our collective wealth still measures close to going on $2 trillion. The fact that we only, that's, that it only takes six hours for us to spend a dollar, the fact that our wealth is so far behind everyone else's, yet we still have that amount of wealth, is ridiculous. Now, when we even take a look at the amount of millionaires that we have, if you look at the how many black millionaires there are, you have, it says there are about 1.79 million African-American millionaires in the United States. And we have about nine African-American millionaires. I mean, billionaires. Now, even if we said, like, for instance, you know, every uh, millionaire, like, it, the, even no matter how we calculate the wealth total, collectively... When, even when you add that all together, they only represent a fraction, what, 7% maybe, or, or 6%, or even less, of the total wealth that we have as a people, which is going on $2 trillion. So when we look at that, that means that all of our wealth is not all centered around celebrities and all of our sports athletes and so forth. No, it's mainly centered amongst us, the everyday people, whether you be upper class, middle class, lower class, just poverty. Our population is big enough that we still, even without the celebrities, the, and I'm mentioning them because these people, celebrities, the billionaires, the um, millionaires, their version of philanthropy is basically following what the world dictates who they need to donate their money to. When we look at us as a people, their interest is not for on our behalf. They're going to follow the whims of Babylon and the system. So the reason why I'm saying that is because expecting them to come out and save us and help us in the situation we're in, it's not going to happen. It requires us as a people coming together and doing it. And I'm going to mention this verse, and I've mentioned it throughout the video, throughout my videos. And that's Zechariah chapter 12, verse 7. Yah, obviously that's the name of our Elohim, which is God, also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the house of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. Now, when you think of a tent, tent, what is that? Is that is, is a tent anything like a having a, a stable house? When I say a stable house, I mean like having a place that you can dwell in that's a permanent dwelling place. A tent is something that is movable. It could be thrown with the wind. It's a place that is for, uh, it's something used by nomads, people that are not stable. Whereas you have inhabitants, people that are stable, people that have a place. Us, when we look at us in the diaspora, we are living in the land of captivity. We are living in unstable conditions. Where, as the wind or the dictates of the Babylonian system dictates, we can be cast potentially to and fro. Obviously, we have the side of, we have the most high, so he protects us. But when it says tense, this is what it's referring to. We, as a people. When you look at the conditions of being living in the captivity and how many of our people are living through it, living under oppression. So this verse is important to realizing that when you look at our situation, it's not gonna get it's not the, the celebrities, the people that have been bought out and paid for, they're not gonna come out to the rescue. But it says that the tents of Judah, the people that are living in tents, unstable conditions, land of cap captivity, under oppression, the Most High will save us first. So now, when you look at this, what it says regarding 
how the Spirit, how the Most High is going to save us. Obviously, when I talk about our collective wealth, money is not the end-all, be-all. We know that. But I'm saying this and to realize that when you start figuring out, okay, when is this going to happen? If we look at Genesis 15, 13, let's take a look at that. And he said unto Abraham, okay, let's see, Genesis chapter 15, going down to 13, he said to Abraham, which would, later his name would become known as Abraham, the grandfather of Jacob, whose name would also be changed to Israel. He says, know of a surety that thy seed, this being the Israelites, shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Now, 1619, in August of 1619, a ship appeared in America near Point Comfort, a coastal port in the British colony of Virginia. The British colony would eventually become an American. The ship held captured Israelites. Yes, the seed of Jacob, the, the grandchildren of Abraham, who was named before was Abraham, as the Most High said. Know of a surety that seed will be strangers in a foreign land be afflicted 400 years. They arrived. The country they arrived was not yet the country we know it now, but that moment is when it began because Israelites would be forced to build America. This is the land that is not theirs. On August 2019 was the end of 400 years that, that the Israelites from the kingdom of Judah had been in America. So 400 years afterwards... Now, as we read in verse 14, afterwards, I will judge that nation. 2019, you get coronavirus, COVID-19. Revelations 18.4 says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, that you receive not of her plagues. Guess what? It's a plague, coronavirus. This is all being fulfilled. Just as it says, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. Now, this is on just America also, you know, total totality social-wise. The Israelites are scattered globally. So this is Brazil. This is Dominican Republic, Haiti, just global. But obviously we know the military power and might of Babylon is in America. All right, so when you look at the dollar, look at the back of the dollar, you see an Egyptian pyramid on it. During the first exodus, where were the Israelites coming out of? They were coming out of Egypt. So when it talks about the second exodus, which you see spoken of by prophets such as Ezekiel in chapter 20, it's referring to a second exodus. Now, obviously, come on now, just use simple logic. Looking at the back of the dollar, who is this new age Egypt? It's America. And obviously, you know, America also includes Babylon. So when you look at Babylon, it says all the nations have committed fornication with her and the Israelites have been scattered globally. So as I said, this is a, a global exodus that is happening. But I always point at primarily America because America is where all the nations gather as we see in the United Nations in New York. Now, it says that I will judge this nation. This is what we see with the plagues going on. Corona was only the beginning. There's much more to come. This is why it says come out of her. This should have been a waking moment. Why am I mentioning all of this? Because, as it says, when we look here, it says, when it comes to us leaving, how are we going to leave? Obviously, this is the part where having either money or connections come in. If you have connections, people that can help you with transportation, and then also when you arrive, and as we said, as I said in my other video, and this is my uh, my channel. Let's see, take a look. I discussed it in my video, King of Israel, True Location in Ethiopia. If you got lodging, people that can help you find a place to stay when you get to Ethiopia, or however you want to. You know, wherever you want to plan on staying when you leave here. Do you have connections? If you don't have connections, do you have wealth? What do you have? 
This is where, like I said, the collective wealth is very important. This is why it also goes back to Genesis where it says that afterwards they shall come out with great substance. So is every Israelite that leaves out of America leaving with $100,000 or 50000 or even 20000 No, not all of them are leaving with that amount of money. But collectively, we possess that, meaning that if 10 of our people left and they arrived and they're cold and they only had, what, maybe 2,000 each, then collectively they have 20,000. If they're working as a collective, then they have $20,000. And then in addition to the intangibles, and what do I mean by intangibles? Skills. Maybe five of them know how to start a business. Each one has different business plans. One probably already owned a business in America. So when he is a, able, so he, he is able to translate that knowledge he gained from, gained from running that business into starting one in Africa. So this definitely benefits when it comes to people who come together. Our people, when it comes, like it says, you know, this is about economic growth. So now as I continue to read, it says, so how can our people return to Africa and then to our homeland without money? And when they arrive, where will they settle without money? We must build an Israelite networking group for food, travel, a place to live, clothes, medical assistance, materials, tools, education for us to grow. So the Israelite networking is important because the pathway for Israelites to reach the wilderness is needed. And I've been discussing about this wilderness, both physical and spiritual, in my previous videos, and I'll continue to. So Israelites, so as it says in the first Exodus, our people wander through the wilderness. Now, you know, if we look at, at it and try to interpret it, yeah, you could look at it, the wilderness as being confusion. You could look at it also for being a point in our meditation so that we can find the straight, narrow path to the kingdom. However you look at it, the point is, is that it's important that when our people are arriving, that they have a level of stability. It's hard for us to be able to meditate, um, navigate ourselves. If we're constantly in basically a life that is filled with tribulations and difficulties. So it's important that we have a support group. Because even if you don't have hot running hot water, or even if you don't have access to all the conveniences that you're used to in America, if you have other people there that you also see that are going through it with you, that's a support group that helps increase your mental health to help you get through it, to overcome the obstacles. Because no one says this is going to be exactly easy. It's going to require a cognitive resonance, which is a change in your mental pathways. Your brain is evolving. It's constantly evolving, just as our heart is ascending and transcending so it's important that we have a support group people coming out as a collective not just as individuals so that we can work together to overcome the odds and have a place where we can call a home so that like it says this is the tents of judah being saved so we are moving out of these tents into stable dwelling places Israelites that could pool their money together as funds for any Israelites that cannot afford traveling when it becomes too difficult to travel, even with money using planes and ships by Babylon. Then we have Israelites who are pilots, have pi plane charters, own ships, and Israelites that know how to sell ships. This helps with travel. What I mean by this is obviously you have a lot of our people that are in debt. Over time, Babylon is going to make it harder for our people to leave or to get a passport unless their debts are paid off. So it will be important for us, uh, the people that are 
and serious having serious issues affording to get a plane ticket or having serious serious issues with being able to travel if we had the finances we could help them pay for a plane ticket if they're unable to get a plane ticket if we have the resources we have people that have planes own planes or uh have a plane chartering business that they can provide the transportation for them themselves where we don't have to rely on a delta or an american airlines or whatever instead we have our own people that have their own pilot license that can fly them to africa the same thing with ships as marcus garvey tried to do when he set up his own um ship business where he was going to ship african americans to africa and you know people in jamaica and other parts of the caribbean and south america and so forth so that they could have so that they can reach um africa this is the benefit of having a network system where you have your own planes you have your own ships you know if you cannot get access to any of these other commercial companies again we also need suppliers for food you know on our travels and when we land so you know whether it's you know obviously having food you know on the ships on the planes you know also having access to food once you get to africa once you get to ethiopia you know having a farm and so forth this is again where i said you know when you have people coming together you have people with business ideas have people with you know uh knowledge and skills we can have these things already laid out there so we also need suppliers um as i said for food on our travel and where we land and where will we go when we need a settlement to live and need when we have people that can build and build in materials farmers medical workers and every other needs that we have you know our people are very resourceful we have black businesses investors inventors workers and people that could donate resources even among non-israelites who are willing to help our cause you know obviously we shouldn't uh just wait on that but you know if that comes then obviously that is a blessing you know so i'm not going to i don't shoot down on obviously you know donations and i also don't shoot down on reparations you know but obviously like it says come out of her my people it's the the goal should be when you do have the means financial means you should you shouldn't just go and start spending it on air jordans or just start spending it on teslas and just the vain products that babylon wants you to buy we're giving up our wealth back to the babylonian system that not only took our ancestors captive and forced them to work here in babylon but that also continues to oppress their descendants which is us so why are you so in effect we are only contributing to the cycle of oppression and captivity now we are becoming oppressors ourselves in a weird paradox fashion and this is why it says come out of her or else you will be part of the plagues because you are also in a way becoming part of the problem you are continuing to provide the life blood for this babylonian system it's not only just against the israelites but it's against the most high so we are keeping this system alive and running the longer we stay here this is why the plagues are affecting us as well because we are becoming the oppressors the longer we remain here now that we're no longer in the 400 years as i said not everyone has the means to do it not everybody has the wealth not everybody has the resources or the connections this is why we need to do it as a collective because for the people that do have connections they can share the connections to the people that do have the wealth they can share the wealth to the people that do have the skills they can share their skills and we can start businesses and we can purchase land and we can start building a community and this 
gets me to another point. So statistics show that when a community consciously promotes practicing group economics, it will improve the quality of life for the population living in those areas. The benefits of group economics are financial independence, promotion of financial literacy, self-sufficiency, business growth, growth, multi-generational wealth building, and nation building. Communal living aims at the unification of the Israelites with a common social and spiritual vision where we all contribute for the community and have responsibilities. Communals are important in arranging our people with shared interests and tensions and creating a healthy lifestyle and to get rid of the hate that we have against each other. In Matthew chapter 19, 17 through 21, it, talks, it says, But if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments, he saith unto him, which... And G Jesus also in Hebrew, Yeshua, said... Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up, what lack I yet? Yeshua said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Jesus Christ added that in addition to the commandments to be perfect with Yah, our Elohim, the young man must give his resources for the poor. Similarly, when the Israelites are gathering together, people will have to put their resources together to help rebuild the Israelite community. Hebrews 10.25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. That day is now that the 400-year curse is over. It's important that we come together as a collective and start pulling our resources together. This is where I say it's very important because when I start looking at some of these things that the black dollar is going on, and this is only a portion of it, this is the categories where black spending is greater in proportion to their population. It's like ethnic hair and beauty aids. You know, a lot of this hair that our people, our women are getting this is artificial here, or is here that was cut off from some poor little girl in Thailand or something like that, or India, or it was taken from a horse, you know, the, the horse tail was cut, you know, or there's just fake made from who knows whatever laboratory process of plastic and chemicals and so forth. You know, you're putting on human animal hair and all of these you know, foreign things onto your body. I mean, it's just, and look how much we are people spending on it. You know, I mean, obviously some of these things we need, but a lot of these, all of these things, we can manufacture ourselves. You know, when you look at the food that we're putting into our body, you know, a lot of these food is, is unclean. The processes that the corporations use, it's all about capitalism, saving a buck. They don't care if they pump the animal with hormones, and these hormones, when we eat the animal, gets into our bloodstream, and then it's passed on to our children, who end up having who knows what type of birth defects, or, you know, it affects their mind, and they start thinking all these evil thoughts. I mean... All of this stuff, remember, our, our bodies are our sacred temple. Be careful what you ingest. Be careful what you follow. So when we look at all of these things that our people are spending on, and look, this is just some of them. It doesn't talk about the Air Jordans. I mean, and when I say Air Jordans, I just mean not even just them, but just Nikes and all the sneakers that we buy. You know, when we look at the biggest sneaker heads, it's the black community. It doesn't really get into that, but... When you look at jewelry, uh, clothing, I mean, we want to go to Neiman Marcus and all these other big clothing corporate, big, you know, stores, clothing stores and so forth. I mean, we're spending all this money on the jewelry and the cars and like I said, just all of this stuff, worldly things. But not realizing that a lot of these things we can manufacture ourselves because we are, when it comes to fashion, that's us. A lot of the big corporations and companies, they copy their idea. They take their ideas from us. 
So why are we not the pioneers of it? Why are we letting them become the pioneers and then we're giving our money to them? It doesn't add up, you know? So I feel like a lot of these things we can manufacture ourselves. And again, when we buy the land, we can set up the production plant, the, the plants, manufacturing plants in the land so that we are being able to be useful, contribute our skills, but we're doing it within our community. And as I said, the Israelite, it's, you know, it's not only just, well, you're black and you're an Israelite. No, the Israelite is your connection with the Most High. Not everyone of Israel is Israel, just as you have some people that are not Israelites that can be grafted onto Israel. It's about us becoming separated from this world and following the path of the Most High. So as I said, I just want this video to help bring some awareness to the fact that we are living in the latter days. And for the people that are ready to come out of her, as it says, you know, I'll leave my information up there. I think it's important that we start coming together and pulling our resources together and actually leave out of Babylon, as it says, before things get worse.